Hey, everybody, come on in. Get comfy. Pull up a pillow. I see Justine, who looks like she has amazing hair. We've got Brandy and her foxy self. We've got Mandy. Who else is hanging out here? You guys can turn on your oh your hair changed color I'm justine it's yeah, not even that anymore <laughs> <laughs> like at the click of a button it just poof yeah it's, uh, i have, I have wigs picture. but that's better so yeah <laughs> oh, hold on a second give me a second here what do we got it's gonna all right well we're gonna hope that's working okay all right, Elena, Amerly, Kim, Mandy. Hi, everybody. So you guys are welcome to turn your cameras on or turn them off and you know have snacks, whatever makes you happy. Um, so I am uh, gonna ask that you are muted if you are not me, <laughs> just so we have minimal sound. This is being recorded for the future. So, uh, so like to keep it clean for other people to be able to see. And we're going to get started here in just a couple of minutes. Uh, so thanks for coming and hanging out tonight. And this is a very question friendly discussion. So, uh, you know, I, it, the way I would like to do this is if you have a question about something that is on the screen at the moment, or I just said something that makes no sense, please shoot that question into the chat right then. Um, and I'll address that, you know, as quickly as I pop as I can while while we're on that thing. If you have a more general question, save that to the end where we will try to have a general Q&A so that we can get through uh, the topics that I want to talk about. <laughs> then, hi, I use words for a living. Yeah, <laughs> we're going to do that as as quickly as, as possible, uh, as efficiently as possible is what I'm trying to say. So let me Bring up and I do have notes. So, okay. And it is just me. I am hosting, I am moderating the chat and I am running the slides and I am running the tech. So, and I'm speaking all at the same time. So please, to make life simpler for me, if you have a question, put the word question in all caps at the front of it in the chat. And that way I will be able to distinguish questions more easily from any other chatter that's going on, which you guys are welcome to chat because we're at a conference. Please network. Um, just make it a little bit easier for me to see things. So, all right. And with that, <laughs> poor Laura doing all this all at once. Uh, hey, I, I have my, my, my big widescreen monitor up. So you should see me, I look so cool right now. And, um, but I then use an external monitor for the slide deck and my husband moved it. So he got a panicked phone call about 20 minutes ago. Like, where is my monitor? So we're back, we're all good, everything's fine. Okay, let's get started. We're gonna talk about author websites in an hour. Not that you will have it built by the end of the hour, but hopefully by the end of the hour, you will have what you need and have a pretty good understanding of what you would like to do. And as I said, this is uh, very question friendly. Um, and I, is, I should also emphasize, this is not the one and only way to get it done. Uh, this is the way I'm telling you to get it done, <laughs> but um, I do have reasons why I think this is a better way, um, and we'll, we'll touch on those as we go, but if you have something else that's working for you, if it's working for you, then it's working for you, okay? So just grab what is useful here, and, um, and you know, then we'll go. So, okay, let's rock. Uh, only if this, there we go. I was like, only if the slides cooperate. So, just real quickly, um, we've got an hour to get through this. This is what we're going to be talking about. Uh, so you get the sneak peek and then it turns out this is not what you thought. You can go grab another session. Uh, but this is what we're going to talk about, um, you know, why, why we're doing this, where we're doing this, how we're doing this. And then if you want the cheat sheet of, you know, my favorite resources that I'm going to mention as we go through, that link will take you to my website where I've put up some links for you. Uh, so there you go. There's your there's your snippet. If you want to grab that and go, you can, <laughs> or here's where, uh, here's where we're going to launch on. So let's start with what I hope is the obvious one. Yes, you do need a website. And a few years ago, there was a lot of 
movement, which fortunately is, I think, dying down now, uh, where people would say, oh, no, I don't need a website. I'm just going to use social media. I'm just going to have a Facebook page. I'm just going to be on Tumblr. I'm just going to, you know, pick a thing. Um, no, don't do that. <laughs> okay. For a variety of reasons, not least of which social media, as you may have noticed in the last year or so, is a wee bit volatile. And um, the number of flounces I saw was people jumped on and off different platforms for political reasons. And, you know, okay, fine, that's great. But now how do I reach these people? Because I'm not going over there and you know, all this stuff. So um, we want to be able to, to, to reach our audience uh, reliably, even if they're moving around. Also, we want to be able to reach our audience reliably. And social media is increasingly, uh, you know, how much are we going to, what, what is the current Facebook post reach that's not boosted with cash. I think it's somewhere like 4% or something. That's not an ROI that I want to rely on. Okay. So, um, there, and then honestly, a lot of fans or readers might not know where to find you on social media, uh, especially, and I'm, I'm going to pick on Brandy cause I see her <laughs> right here. Uh, Brandy's social media name is Foxy writer. She does a great job of mentioning that a lot of places, but if somebody just sees the cover of her book, they're not automatically going to think Brandy Ackerley. Oh, I should search for Foxy writer. Right. Um, so we want to make sure that we've got something that is going to stick in, you know, Google search results. And I can, uh, I can grab those people as they're looking for me or, or dear goodness, anybody who's trying to find me, my name is Lara Van Arendonk Baugh. Nobody's going to spell that right on the first try, okay? I need something that I can grab a lot of related traffic and pull it to me. Uh, so this is how I want to think of my website. It is, it is my central hub. That is where I'm going to catch people. Then if I you know, want, I can direct them, hey, go here to buy this audiobook. Go here to follow me on this, your favorite social media. Go here to catch my podcast interview that I did with this other person. Go here where you can read up on um, additional world building information. You know, all of these things, but everything uh, funnels to my website. So then I can send out from the website and call them back in. So that's going to be my, my hub where everything else comes there. The big thing about your website, and I think a lot of writers don't think about this, we think about our books as being, um, uh, what am I trying to say? Uh, uh, our books are how people think of us. And that's true once they've read them. <laughs> but if, if they happen across your website, you know, that's going to be, it's a, just think of it as a giant business card. And I'm sorry, Brandy, I didn't mean to, to, to imply that you were not searchable. You're incredibly searchable. I should have said that more clearly. I just meant that your author name and your social media username are not inherently linked, right? Um, but yeah, she, she says searching for one usually comes up with the other, but it's good to have a hub. Yeah, absolutely. So if I go to somebody's author website and they have you know, like a couple of lines and a coming soon picture and you know some things like that, I'm, I'm gonna assume that they haven't invested a lot of time and resources in their author career because they don't look like they've invested a lot of time. They don't come across looking professional. So we want to be very, very shiny. Okay. <laughs> Brandy says, call me out. I'm here for a reason. Okay. Uh, so let's start setting this up. We're going to go through the pieces that you need. The first one, the most basic one is your domain name. Your domain name, think of it as the street address for your website. For me, that is lauravanarendonkbaugh.com. Uh, so this you can get your domain name from a lot of places. Those are all domain registrars. Uh, and these are, this is something where you start right away trying to make a more professional impression. If I'm using uh, a free hosting site, which we'll talk about in a bit, um, and I'm using the, the free domain name that they gave me or the free URL that came with that, um, you know, so I might end up something with like Laura Van Arendonkba at you know, dot superfreesite.com. Does that look super professional? Not the most part. Okay. Uh, so I want something that makes me look all the way already. Like, you know, I have arrived, take me seriously, whether or not I feel that way. We were talking about imposter syndrome earlier today, but uh, I want something that gives that a good impression. Likewise, having my own email. If you want to email me, Laura at lauravanarendonkbaugh.com looks a lot better than Laura at hotmail.com. Okay. Sorry, but it's not 2003 anymore. Okay. You want to, you, and these are very affordable. You can get them and already look leveled up. Okay. You may want more than one domain name. If your name is lauravanarendonkba.com and you really just don't expect people to know how to spell that, 
Laura, V-A-B.com makes a much more user-friendly address. And you'll see that's what I've got here on my own screen here today. All right. You can buy this domain name from a reputable domain registrar for probably just a few bucks. Um, honestly, I, at this point, I put 10 to $20 a year. That's allowing for some very fancy ones. I've purchased domain names for as little as $2. Okay, so you, you don't, this is not gonna break the bank. It is absolutely worth uh, making the investment there. And sometimes people will tell me, you know, hey, I, I, you know, maybe someday I'll get my own domain name, but I don't, I don't see any reason to spend that $2 today. <laughs> I'm like, first of all, did you buy a coffee? Then go buy a domain name. But secondly, most importantly, you're trying to promote yourself right now. If you're putting out, you know, business cards or you're putting stuff out on the internet with a link to your website, that's not going to magically disappear when you decide you want your own domain name later. So go ahead and I'm um, doing that. So, okay, great question. Should you buy the domain name from your host or on your own? Uh, and I was just about to get there. So great, let's do this segue now. Uh, you can buy your domain name from any legal uh, domain registrar. Some are a little bit more reputable than others. There are, I'm not gonna go through a complete list. There's no way I'm, we're gonna take time to do that. But like namecheap.com is, is one that I feel comfortable recommending. Many times your internet hosting company where I'm actually gonna park my, uh, my website, uh, they will also sell uh, domain names it's not necessarily a bad idea to get it there, um, especially if you're dealing with a reputable company, you know, Bluehost, Dreamhost, something like that. Um, but uh, some there, there are, if you if you get with some place that's a little bit shady, it can be incredibly hard to get that domain name back later. And um, actually, my sister is working with a nonprofit right now who uh, you know did did something with a shady domain, and they're not releasing the transfer. Uh, the domain transfer. And if that doesn't make sense to you, don't worry about it. Um, the point is like, it's like your phone number that now by law, you should be able to take it to any provider, um, at least in the US. I don't know if that's true in Canada, sorry. Um, but uh, but yeah, that's um, the answer is it's it doesn't really matter. Just make sure you get it from someplace that's like a legit company. So, okay. And thank you for the reminder re-question. I did see that one go by, but I do appreciate that that reminder. And Brent asks, at what point do you need a website? I'm not yet published, but I'm starting to network. Here's the thing. We're, a lot of the stuff we're looking at today is extremely affordable. If, if you want to drop 20 or 30 bucks and have a website up so that you look a little bit more polished while you're trying to do that networking, it can only help, right? Um, well, depending on what you put on your website, you still want to look professional when you get there. Um, but I would say if you are actively trying to promote yourself, go ahead and have that website because now it becomes your hub that we were talking about. Um, if you're not trying to do any promotion, then don't spend the money on the website. But if you're, you know, if you're buying a business cards, go ahead and buy the website. It's just a really big business card. There's my very rough rule of thumb that I just came up with just now. Right, okay. So Angela's got experience with Bluehost. Yeah, they're a pretty reputable company. All right. Hello, slide deck, please work. Thank you. Okay, um, choose your domain name. You do not want to be changing this on the regular because then everybody you gave a card to with name A now can't find you because your name is now name B. So try to think in you know, long future thoughts uh, at when you choose your domain name. If your name is really common, you may wanna do something with it that indicates you are an author, you are selling books, You know, do something to make that uh, unique and that way you can pick up something that's still available and uh, linked connected to you. You can get different suffixes like you see here on the right dot online dot site dot studio you know all these kinds of things. I think there may be a dot books now. I don't know. I've been watching for that. I don't know if I've seen it go by or not. Um, just be careful with these because for the most part people have not been trained to expect them the way they have a .com or a .co or you know something like that, um, and so even if they remember, you know, Laura VAB, if it's Laura VAB dot shiny books <laughs> or something, they're they're going to put in Laura VAB .com when they next get to their phone uh, or computer, and and then they're not not going to find you. So you do try to think of something that's going to be intuitive for your for your readers. The other thing I think of is what is it going to sound like? And again, my names. A little bit of a handle. So um, if you, I just did, I just did a podcast interview and you'll hear, oh, 
I'm Laura Van Arndonk Ball. You can find me at lauravaba.com. Oh, sorry, with the words. This is not my, I've been talking a lot today. I just want to say that my, I, I'm on my third set of batteries. So hold on <laughs> for my headset. All right. You can find me at lauravab.com. That's Laura Victor Alpha Bravo.com. Okay. So you're, um, so in those, those people who maybe haven't have never heard of me before I, that podcast interview, but they know how to find me and they don't hear something that's going to be hard to translate into text. So think about how can I say this more easily? <laughs> clearly, <laughs> clearly it was hard for me to say just now. Um, how are people going to be able to hear and recall what you're saying here? So hopefully that makes sense. All right. So now I've got my address. Where am I going to park this website? So um, my, you know, my website's like my mobile home and I'm going to rent a lot for it. <laughs> That's what your hosting is. Okay. Um, Self-hosted WordPress is what I am going to recommend for the most part. And this is a little bit confusing because self-hosted WordPress, uh, what I'm going to pretentiously here refer to as real WordPress, uh, is different from, from WordPress.com, which is what a lot of people think of when they hear WordPress because, well, WordPress.com does seem like the obvious reference to that. Um, it is extremely confusing and I'm pretty sure that's not entirely unintentional, okay? Uh, WordPress.com is kind of a light uh, freebie turnkey version of WordPress. Self-hosted WordPress means I am renting server space and I am putting my website on that space and I'm doing whatever I want with that space with the WordPress software. I'm hosting it myself on a hosting service. WordPress.com is a company that rents out space, I guess it's more like a condo, um, than, I'm sorry, I didn't work on these metaphors beforehand. If they're not working, throw them away. I won't be, I won't be offended. Um, but you are not installing WordPress there. You do not have a complete WordPress software there. What you have is a light kind of a small playground. It's very similar to Wix or Squarespace or uh, GeoCities, <laughs> if you want to jump back. Um, it's something like that, where they're giving you a place that, but they're not giving you full access to things. You don't actually own what you're using. I hope that makes sense to you. It's, it, like I said, it is very confusing. WordPress.org is where you can get the WordPress software that then you can install anywhere you want. It is open source free software. Okay. The advantages of self-hosted WordPress, it is ridiculously flexible. Anything that you want to do, you can do on WordPress. Somebody has already done it. And I feel pretty comfortable saying that because approximately a third of the internet runs on WordPress. Anything that you want to do has already been done and somebody's put up a tutorial for it. Okay. So um, oh, here, I just said that 30% of the internet. Yeah, it's, it's ridiculously popular for a reason. That means there are a lot of tutorials. It means there are a lot of options. You do not have to reinvent the wheel. The wheel is extremely polished on WordNet, on WordPress. Uh, it has regular updates. So your security can be very, very good. Uh, sometimes you might hear about people getting hacked in WordPress sites. We'll talk about that in a bit. It's not really WordPress's fault. We'll talk about that. WordPress is search engine optimization friendly. That's SEO. Um, that's a nerdy way of saying it's really good at the Googles. Okay. So when people are searching for Lara Van Schmirken Bob, uh, and I've got a lot of stuff on my WordPress site, it's very, very easy for search engines to find that, put that together and bring them to me. Um, and here is the biggest one. And this is one of my biggest you know, this is why it was why WordPress is great points. WordPress is a content management software that can be installed anywhere. Any web host anywhere can host WordPress. It is open source. You can take it any place. I can, if I get really ridiculously, my, my hosting service is slow. There's a lot of downtime. They've raised their rates. They're not offering what I want. I simply hit export on WordPress, move to a new host, hit import, and I'm back in business in minutes, okay? Meanwhile, if you are on Wix, Squarespace, any of those that use a proprietary builder, guess what? You can't move without starting completely from scratch. 
and they know that <laughs> so they don't have to take care of you because you're kind of stuck okay so um am i telling people like you know and i just saw somebody said i use wix i use squarespace i'm not telling you like it's a terrible idea if it's working for you as i said it's working for you if you are looking for places to to start uh, a friend of mine right now is dealing with you know her hosting company is shutting down at the end of the month and she has her website on a proprietary builder she has to build her website from scratch uh, in in less than a month okay and if you were on wordpress this is a five minute job so just be aware okay um all right um okay so nicole if you're using godaddy godaddy is a is a hosting company and a domain company not a content management software like wordpress but you can put wordpress anywhere and um you're probably you're you're not the only person who's had some problems with GoDaddy, <laughs> so just go somewhere and and grab WordSpace. Um, okay, uh, so V three asks. There's a lot. I was shocked when during a wave wave of canceling WordPress canceled some people. What to be my self hosted WordPress is your own web space. I'm not sure what you mean by WordPress canceled some people. Um, so I'm going to speak to some things which would be true but i don't know if this is the situation that you're talking about if wordpress.com as a hosting company discovers that somebody on their website uh is putting up neo-nazi material or you know whatever um probably a violation of terms of service they can absolutely cancel that service okay um if i and i'm i'm using currently i'm using dreamhost as a host that's there's lots of good ones I have DreamHost. I have my own, uh, you know, website with my own content on there. Nobody really has to approve it. Now there are laws. Um, you know, I can't put up stolen in, uh, IP on there. I can't, you know, pirate books and that kind of thing. Um, probably there are some terms of service about, you know, what kind of, you know, racial murder I can call for. Okay, so there are there are things. There are still going to be um, parameters, but. Uh, but I don't have to get past anybody to put up my thoughts on my blog, I, I guess. I don't know exactly where you were going with that. Um, I'm not familiar with, with uh, WordPress uh, canceling people. So anyway, there we go. Hopefully I, I got that question. Um, WordPress has, or I'm sorry, you, there are lots and lots of options for where you can put your this WordPress. As I said, it's free open source software. Most of the time, if you go to uh, any decent hosting provider, uh, you don't even have to install the software. They know a third of the internet runs on it. You just sign up and be like, hey, I would like a shared hosting account for $3 a month or whatever it is. Uh, and I would like it on WordPress, please. And they're like, great, here's your panel. We already installed WordPress for you. So um, this is not something that you, if you need to install WordPress, you can. Most of the time, you're probably not even going to need to install it. Um, I just pulled the number $3 a month out. Um, that's a pretty common price for shared hosting. I slow down there because shared hosting is a phrase that you would want. For an entry level website, shared hosting is a pretty good service tier. Um, if it's if you are running <laughs> amazon.com levels of traffic, it's not gonna hold up, okay? It's an entry level tier, but most people, an entry level tier is going to make a sufficient author website, okay? If, I'm hoping that makes sense. Okay, um, and you can get really good deals on these shared hosting deals. Um, I'm in the United States, Black Friday is a huge thing <laughs> and I've seen crazy good deals uh, for Black Friday sales um, with hosting companies. So it's worth, you know, just kind of keeping an eye out, looking for coupons, looking for deals. And then if you really are getting a lot of traffic and it's, um, you know, so much traffic that your website needs a little bit of an extra boost, you just upgrade to the next level, you know, from shared hosting up to maybe a virtual private server or something like that. None of that. Don't worry about any of that now. Um, the point is, it is expandable. You don't, you just upgrade your service. You don't have to move to a new website or anything like that. Okay. Um, all right. So, and then I, we touched on this already some of the they're sometimes called do-it-yourself sites but um anything that's using a proprietary builder you know wix squarespace any of those um 
those are something, again, you want to be a little bit cautious about because it's harder to move if something goes wrong. Wix says, hey, we're doubling our prices this month, or hey, that feature used to be on your plan. It no longer is. Um, you know, I was just talking to somebody a couple of weeks ago about her site and, um, and she's like, well, I can't do that because it's not in my service tier and I'd have to move up you know, to the next level of service in order to get that feature. And I'm like, it's not that uncommon a feature. I don't remember what it was, but um, something that wasn't, wasn't even a full level shopping cart. It was just like, like, I, I don't know, simple downloads or something. And she's like, oh, that's 20 or $25 a month. And I'm like, for $25 a month, I can have the shiniest, you know, <laughs> no, 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 no. Um, you know, you're, they're, they're, they're counting on the fact that you can't move, right? So anyway, uh, World Anvil, sometimes people like to use World Anvil as their base site. I love World Anvil. It's a great site. It's a great community. Um, the same thing like, is might be really hard to move if you decide that you need to. Okay. So just, just be aware, um, proprietary platforms, anytime you're using something that's just purely proprietary, you're going to have a heart, you're going to have less flexibility in the future. So just be aware. Um, so, and, and yeah, just, this is just exactly what we were just talking about. Not going to, not going to reiterate. Okay. Let's move on. Um, yes, Nicole. Uh, so you can cancel your host. If you're hosting at GoDaddy and take your domain name to DreamHost and use WordPress as the uh, website base uh, itself. Yes, that is all correct. So, and Mandy, uh, domain name is your address. So you'll need that. A host is the lot where you're going to park your website. Um, and then the software WordPress is the actual building of your website. Hopefully that makes sense. So um, so I've got my RV. Um, the the domain name is my change of address form. So people know where to send my mail. My RV is WordPress and I'm gonna park it on the lot. That's my, uh, that's my hosting service. And like I said, I didn't really work on these metaphors ahead of time. So if those are not clear, please let me know. Um, uh, Elena asks if there's options or alternatives to WordPress and are they better? Probably the closest competitor that I'm aware of at this time is Joomla. I used to use Joomla a lot. Now I'm exclusive. Now I just do everything on WordPress, um, and I run multiple websites and host for some nonprofits and things. So um, it's a lot. Uh, WordPress, because it is so popular and so flexible, usually it's a better option because you're just going to have more flexibility with it. Is it the only option? Absolutely not. That's why I preface that <laughs> this way at the top. Um, this is just something that um, I'm hoping makes sense. So, okay. Um, and Angela, if you're I, saying you, you, you don't need software, um, okay, if, if the, the software, okay, I think, I'm, I think, I'm thinking I understand what's, what's being said, but I just want to clarify because it could be taken two ways. Um, if you log into the site and build in the browser, um, and again, I'm, I'm making a distinction from WordPress.com, which is using their own limited version of the WordPress software, WordPress software lives on your hosting service. You do not have to pay for it. It is a free software, it is open source, so anybody can develop for it. Um, so if I am on, you know, Bluehost, you know, whatever your, whatever your hosting service is, there's a lot out there, HostGator, you know, there's a lot. Um, they will have WordPress installed almost guaranteed if you go to any popular um, hosting service and you don't have to do anything, just get the account, it's there, let's go. Okay, hopefully that makes sense. Yes, and then as Brent's pointing out, you do have to take your website with you. WordPress has a button that says export. You click it, you move to your new place, you go into your new empty WordPress, click import, whoosh, your site appears. It's great. Okay, <laughs> so, okay. All right. Um, and Elena asking about DreamHost, Namecheap, Bluehost, and HostGators. Uh, I'm not sure I saw the initial question, but those are all. Uh, hosting services that I would probably feel pretty comfortable recommending. Those are all pretty reputable services. Um, so, okay. A responsive theme, make sure that uh, you have, <laughs> write this down, you need one. Okay. A responsive theme means that, um, and, a, and a theme is 
how your WordPress is decorated. Let's just go with the RV <laughs> metaphor here. Um, it's, it's the paint, it's the wallpaper, it's what makes it look like it looks, okay? I Rather than hand coding all the CSS and all the structure and everything that's going to be tedious and require a lot of technical savvy, I can install a theme on WordPress. WordPress comes with some themes or you can get some that are much more customizable and much more advanced. And that does my layout and my, uh, my site theme colors and all of that for me to, you know, your, what fonts you're using, all of those things. Um, you want a theme that displays well on both a desktop site and on mobile. Responsive theme means that it adjusts with the size screen that is being used to view it. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense. Justine, if you enjoy the coding part, more power to you. There are things I want to code and there, but a whole site is not one of them. <laughs> so, okay. Um, responsive theme is so critical today because we live in a mobile age. Everybody's using their phones or their tablets to access the internet. Probably half of your traffic at least is going to be coming from a not big desktop computer, okay? Um, and this is true across all demographics. And it, could, you know, it used to be fairly safe to say, oh, well, I'm writing for boomers, so they're going to be using X device, right? That is not the case. Um, I was giving my mom a hard time because uh, she works with one of, the, one of the nonprofits that I'm hosting for. And, um, and I installed some new stuff for her. So I'm like, hey, you don't have to go to the post office to ship things anymore. Like you can sit at, the, at your chair and somebody brings an order in for some of the books for the nonprofit and you push a button and it prints your, your label and with your shipping already on it and everything's done, yay. And she's like, but I can't do it from my phone. I have to walk to the computer. I'm like, I saved you a trip to the post office. You can walk 12 feet, right? <laughs> but this is the thing, like, you know, the, everybody's using their phones to manage stuff. So you wanna make sure that everything is responsive. Not only do visitors leave a site that does not load mobile friendly, if you've ever experienced trying to get something on your phone and it just comes in all wonky and hard to read. So you're like, well, it's not worth it to me. Um, but the, the other thing is, remember we talked about search engine optimization. If your site does not load well on mobile, Google and other search engines will rank it lower. So in order to be discoverable, you need to be responsive so that you're search engine friendly. Okay. Um, Lynette asks, what are the most you know, critical parts of the author website? It's coming, we'll get there. I'm just taking a while, sorry. <laughs> we're answering other things as we're going. All right, in fact, it's here now. <laughs> so let's do this. What do I absolutely need my website to do? Uh, it needs to identify me and most importantly, identify my brand, okay? You need to know at a glance Maybe not exactly which micro subgenre I'm doing, but you need you should probably know if I'm doing thrillers or romantic comedies. Okay, at a glance, and this is where your theme comes in and how you decorate your website. Uh, there needs to be a way for your readers to get on your mailing list. Remember, I want a way to contact people directly. It would be great if they could buy a book while you're there. <laughs> okay, um, this is uh, you know, hey, we, we're, we're here because we want to sell books, so make sure you give them a way to do that. There should be a way for them to contact you or to find you on social media, something where they can feel they can, they can reach you or get a little closer to you. If you have a backlist, be awesome to list that so people know, hey, there's more work. I really liked what I just read. Let's go buy other stuff by her. Current titles and coming titles. So an easy way to, to check out, oh, oh, well, this is actually a series and the new book comes out next month. Hey, I should pre-order that. Likewise, if you have any works in progress, great thing to update people on. Calendars with your events, where you're speaking, where you're signing, all of those things. This conference is on my website calendar so people can see that I am participating and, um, and, and speaking and they can see that I'm active. Uh, a blog, and not everybody is, uh, is into blogging. If you like to blog, definitely blog. It's great for your SEO and, um, and it gives you an outlet. And if you're like, oh my gosh, the blog sounds terrible, then you don't have to do it. It's okay. <laughs> so, but again, big, big thing here is this is your business card. This is a huge piece of your marketing. Do think about how it represents you and your author brand. Okay. So, um, 
you know, one, one thing I would say here is, okay, let's, uh, I've got three photos of the same person. Um, look at, uh, you know, look at these. These are all taken the same day by the same photographer, but these convey very, very different feelings, right? So you know, I would not assume that all of these people are selling the exact same thing. So this is something you can pick and choose. You know, maybe you have one page of your site that leans a little bit more, uh, you know, thrillers or urban fantasy or something. So I'm going to use photo C for that. Uh, but I also write nonfiction about animal behavior. <laughs> it's a very scientific bent. Maybe a photo A is a good option for that. Okay. So um, I actually will use all of these, but I'll use them in different places. So people know exactly where they've landed. So, okay. Questions. Let's get back in here. Uh, how often should you blog? Yes. <laughs> Honestly, there's no single correct answer to that. We could spend several hours debating and you'll certainly find people on the internet who have a lot of opinions. Um, the one consensus that seems to be is uh, consistent is better. Um, so if you choose to do it weekly, do it every Monday or every, you know, don't just do it random days of the week. But if you choose to do it monthly or if you choose to do, you know, again, just usually it's gonna be better to be consistent, but that interval of time, very, very flexible. What do you blog about when you haven't published professionally yet? Okay, so great, good question. Uh, I gotta keep moving, uh, but we're gonna touch on this really quickly. A trap for a lot of author blogs is they blog about writing, which honestly, most non-authors are like, yay. So revisions, don't really care. Okay. Um, but we think that's important because we're authors, <laughs> but, but your readers are not necessarily interested in that. What your readers are interested in are the things that, that make them interested in your book. So if you're writing something about uh, archeological thrillers, just to grab something, blogging about, hey, this is some of the research I've been doing. Did you know that we found this piece in 1982 and then this happened and you know all of these things? Um, probably should have come up with some better examples, but the idea being people who are interested in a genre tend to be interested in a genre for a certain reason. So, um, you know, when I had some urban fantasy coming out and I was, uh, blogging about, um, Hey, here's some recent cryptid news. Okay. And so I had several pieces of that and then, Oh, and here's the pre-order. <laughs> so, you know, different, different, different things like that. You can, you can grab it off. So <laughs> yeah, everybody's doing the job blogging. Okay. Um, so let's go back to branding for just a little bit here. This is uh, a friend, Margaret McGriff. This is her, uh, this is what you'll see as her website loads. This is the image you will see. It's pretty, you know, open, clear, lots of, uh, lots of space around it. And you know, right off the bat, what kinds of things she's writing. We've got pirates, we've got beach scenes, we've got, okay, wait, treasure hunting none? What the heck? Okay, so these are the kinds of things that um, you're gonna land and see uh, either at a, at a glance, either I need to know more or this looks like nothing at all I'd be interested in. And I need to do that within the first few seconds of landing, okay? Um, and that's gonna be your best use of space. Meanwhile, if we jump over to my site, my site is a, whoa, whoa, sorry. Oh, I'm so sorry. Okay. Mine is a lot harder to nail down because Margaret writes one specific genre in YA, and I am a little bit of a mix. Um, that's not career advice. It's just a self-report. <laughs> but, but the thing is, you do know immediately what I am not. Okay. Does this look like a romantic comedy page? No. Okay. Um, does this look like a thriller page? No. Okay. And does look like maybe several flavors of fantasy. And then if you click over, you might see some other stuff going on, but, but this is, um, you're still going to get a little bit of a thing. Uh, Mandy asks, how do you keep multiple genres on one website? I'm working on that. <laughs> so the, the, the thing is I want to break it up a little bit. Um, if they're very distinct genres, I might actually have like a landing page and say, choose here for romance and choose here for um, you know, self-help or, you know, make, make them really, really distinct. Uh, if it's something that, you know, can work together, I've got epic fantasy and urban fantasy, maybe. Um, and I might not try to separate those as much, but I will have, you know, here's this series, here's this series. And so people can kind of guide and select. Uh, you can get really technical and make, make a little flow chart on how your readers should uh, progress as they arrive, but I wouldn't worry about that too much to start what you, um, 
what you're trying to do is just, again, I, I'm, I've got, I want people to know that they hit the right spot. Okay. If they've, if they've come from one of my books, they saw my URL in the back of the book and they typed it in. I want them to know immediately. Oh yeah, this is where I was looking for. And Ooh, what's that? I need to sign up for this newsletter. Okay. These are my goals when they arrive. Hopefully that makes sense. So again, yeah, <laughs> going back to branding. Um, and this goes back to, you know, anything I'm doing on social media, like I'm going to make geek jokes. I'm going to talk about folklore and, um, you know, how fairy tales affect, you know, culture or something. And, and if you hate the fact that I uh, think women should vote, then you can also hate the fact that women do things in my books. Okay. So it's all about having consistent branding. Um, you know, I said earlier today, half of marketing is filtering out people who are not your readership which sounds horrible and scary, but is actually really, really freeing. I don't want to waste my time and energy. I don't want to spend my resources marketing to people who don't like my stuff. Okay. I want people to know immediately I should stay here and get on this newsletter and buy this book. Um, and I, if they're looking for something, that's not what I offer. Great. Go get that more power to you. Okay. But it's not good for them. And it's not good for me to keep them. Um, and, keep them using my resources. I don't want to pay money to send email to people who don't want to read my stuff. Okay. There's that. Um, and this is, you know, just, this is universal. You've seen this in other marketing things before, you know, your, your, your persona, your, your tone, um, how I present myself online should probably sit somewhere with how I present myself, how I should present my books. Um, so just, that's not to say that I need to sound like my characters, dear heavens. No. Um, just, you know, if I'm, if I'm, uh, if I'm writing really, really sweet Amish romance and I'm a foul-mouthed pirate in real life, those are not going to jive well, right? So you are your brand. Uh, if you, if you are looking at all to refine your author brand, um, uh, my friend Katie Phillips is an editor and writing coach who has this free course on her website just to get people started. So feel free to take a look at that. Um, okay. And so now we're getting back on the website. We're building a website. I've got to build an about page. And oh my gosh, why do we need an about page? I'm a writer. I don't want to, be, <laughs> not a movie star, right? Why do we need an about page? Um, and it's really hard. And I'm from the American Midwest and Midwesterners, we don't talk about ourselves. So about pages, what the heck even. Um, but one thing that really helped me is my about page is not about me. It's still about my reader. Everything is about my reader. What is in it for my reader? For my nonfiction stuff, that's really easy. I can sell you the thing that's gonna make your life better, right? Um, and for my fiction stuff, it's, it feels a little bit harder, but this is why my escapism is the one you want, okay? It's, this is what this is going to do for you. So, hey, thank you so much, Lynette. And, um, and those, uh, that link is in the, the the list of resources that I mentioned at the, at the front of, the, of the, the deck, and it will be again at the end of the deck, it is in that list of resources. So you can go there and get that. So, okay. Um, and um, the, the presentation will be on replay, I'm pretty sure. So yes, you can watch this whole thing again. And can a media kit be better than an about page? I would say it is different than an about page and I would have both, not either or. Um, so well, I think we're going to get to that here in just a second. These are questions that many times people arriving at an author's website are arriving with this question in mind. So we're going to walk through a few of these and make sure your website addresses these. I just read this great book by this author. I picked up the library. I didn't know anything about her, but I really enjoyed it. What else has she written? Make it easy to find what other books you have available. Um, I've been to a lot of author websites where they only list one or two books. I know they have 10, but they're hard to, either they're not on the website at all, or they're hard to find. So make sure that you have that backlist available. Um, I would like to buy a book. <laughs> okay. There's a couple ways to do this. Um, if you're just starting out, you don't have uh, a lot of resources or a lot of know how, or you just don't want to mess with it at this time, um, just link out to where people can pick up your work. Don't wait, link with a lot of links. If, uh, actually, you know, if you, if you put up too many options, people just go for the simplest, which is none. All right. But 
I would say link to more than one place. I have a lot of readers who have informed me they don't buy from Amazon. Great, that's fine, it's their prerogative. But if I only put up Amazon and links on my website, I'm gonna lose all those people. Okay, so make sure that you have maybe two or three retail links, you know, things that you know people are gonna use, but keep it pretty clear, um, neat and clean. Um, I have a full scale shopping cart on my website. I use WooCommerce, which is free on WordPress. <laughs> um, and so people can arrive at my, my website, pick out a paperback, tell me who they would like it signed to, and, um, and then it wings off into the ether to them. Um, so, and that's something that I, I installed that plugin. I'm, I set up all the, all the things there, but I'm doing it with a free plugin on WordPress. So it's very accessible. And all of your images, you know, your, your book cover should also be a link that goes to, you know, a place where they can get their book. Uh, just assume that people are trying to get it. WooCommerce is W-O-O -O, commerce. I think it's all one word, but if you put in it in two words, it will definitely come up. W-O-O -O, commerce. The base software is free. They make a profit by selling uh, extensions and add-ons that do cost money. Everything I have running on my store, uh, on my website, I'm doing with the free version. So it is quite flexible. Yes. And again, that is also uh, in that resource page that you will see again later. I want to follow this author. He sounds really fascinating. Where can I learn more about him? So if you're on social media, which is your choice, in a way that supports your author brand, which is very important distinction to make, then go ahead and promote your social media on your website. If you really don't want to participate on social media, or if your social media is not a great place to connect with your readers for any reason, then probably don't promote it on your website. And again, don't clutter on the links. Um, you know, all of our advice about social media is to pick you know, one or two platforms, and those are the ones you're going to focus on. Great, promote those two things. You know, I'm technically on Tumblr. My author presence on Tumblr is, I think it's not technically non-existent, but uh, about as minimal as you can get, right? So I don't promote my Tumblr account on my website because it would be, you know, actually probably detrimental rather than helpful. Uh, definitely have a contact form, some way that, you know, if I'm looking for, you know, hey, you sound like an author I'd love to have on my weekly live stream. How can I invite you onto my weekly live stream? Please have a contact form. Don't make me try to private message you through Twitter or something like that. Um, and then here's where you can have a media kit. What I would say is if you're just starting out, the media kit's your lowest priority. Get the contact form and other things first. But then when we're ready, let's go ahead and put up a press kit or a media kit. This will have your bio. It will have all your contact info. It'll have a headshot. It'll list. Um, if you're doing one for a specific book, it'll have that book. If you're not, if it's a more general media kit, it'll say author of the beloved Shard of Milan series or, you know, whatever you want to do. Um, you know, it, this is where uh, you say these are, these are the topics that come up a lot in these books. So this is a great tie-in for this kind of talk or, you know, whatever you're doing. Um, you can use, uh, you can get this, uh, bundle it into a zip file with your including, you know, photos and, and PDFs and stuff all together, or it can just be a PDF with everything on one page that's downloaded, but then make this downloadable from your website. So if a media person does not have to ask you for things and does not have to hunt for things, it is easy to find, make people's lives easy. It's the fastest way to get the networking done. So, yes. Okay. So um, can I, I'm going to, I'm going to switch this page. So if you, if you're taking notes, or if you want to screen cap this, this is your chance. Five, four, three and a half, two, three. Okay. Let's go. Um, a huge one. I want visitors to my site to be able to sign up for my newsletter. Please, please arrive at my site. And the first thing that I want you to do is sign up for my newsletter because now I have a way to reach you and tell you when this pre order is going up or something like that. So you can do this several ways. You can have a sign up form in the middle of your site. I have a widget in the sidebar. I have a widget at the bottom of the site. You might have a pop up. There's so many ways to do this. Just have one. Make sure people can sign up for your newsletter. This is a great place to offer those lead magnets um, that you've heard about. Um, and be super clear, do not try to tease people like, hey, would you like $5 sign up here? Oh, by the way, it's my newsletter. Okay, no, don't be a jerk. Um, so there we go. Um, Steven asks, how do you find relevant plugins and put it all together? Check 
the page of resources that I've got, which has a list of some of my favorite plugins that I recommend. There are so many plugins. And this is, again, one of the great things about uh, WordPress is everybody can develop for it. So you can get a lot of options. Um, but there are some plugins that are pretty much going to be useful for everybody. And I do have those on, on that resource page. What is a lead magnet? Uh, this is more of a marketing question, but very briefly, this is the thing that I offer for free to get people to give me their email address. Would you like three free short stories and a prequel to my, to my series? Sign up for my newsletter and you'll get them dripped to your inbox once a week, that kind of thing. Okay. Unpublished. What do you write about on a newsletter? Oh man, we do not have time to, to go into my, uh, my marketing rant. Um, uh, we'll see if we can come back to that. I'm sorry, when we move, move on. And if we have time later, we'll come back to that. Brief note on mailing lists. I am gonna get on the soapbox and beat this because there's a lot of abuse that takes place. And not only is it illegal in a lot of places, it is also just a jerk maneuver and it will also ultimately hurt you rather than help you, okay? You're, newsletter, people must be able to opt in. Ideally set your newsletter up so that people have to double opt in. And what that term means is that they sign up for the newsletter. They get an email saying, did you really mean to sign up for this? They click yes. And now they're on the newsletter. Keeps people from being added against their will. Uh, keeps, you know, you know no, nobody gets you know, signed up by an angry ex or, you know, whatever. Um, I'm in the U.S. It is required by law that we have a physical mailing address and our newsletter. I get stuff all the time that does not have that. Uh, oh my gosh, it has to have an unsubscribe link. If it does not have an unsubscribe link, it is A, illegal, B, super annoying. It also means the only way I can get off your mailing list is to mark it as spam. Guess what that does to your sending uh, in rates and, and how, how much stuff gets through. Okay, this is stuff that seems like a short-term good idea, but is actually a terrible idea. Um, GDPR, that's the European privacy laws. Even though I don't live in Europe, I try to do best practices for that because some of my readers are in Europe and that's what they expect. And I don't want to be annoying or surprising in a bad way, my readers. Okay, um, Sendy and SendFox are really affordable mailing services. Uh, those are in the resource list. We will not talk about them at this time for time reasons. Okay, when is the next book coming out? My Book Progress is a free plugin specifically for authors to promote how, where they are on their work in progress. Um, so uh, you can see, you know, this is one I think I screen capped recently off mine. You know, those are clearly not my final covers. I will put a, a final cover up when I have that and I can shift it to the phase is the editing phase, the phase is the proofreading phase. Okay, so people can get really excited about seeing that come down. Uh, what events, where can I find my favorite author? So uh, this is where I'll have some sort of calendar plugin. There are lots of free and paid versions. Um, so again, I have a link to this in the resources page, the one that I'm currently using. And uh, so hopefully uh, you can see that, um, but it, then people can you know, find you and they see that you're active, you know, they see that you're, you're doing things and it just makes you look a little bit more professional as well as they can actually show up and buy stuff. Okay, so here we're going to talk a little bit about a blog and we're going to move very quickly. I'm sorry because of time. Um, but again, this blogging is a little bit out of fashion right now because everybody's like, oh, social media is where it's at. Here's the thing. I think blogs are far more searchable and more permanent than most social media. Uh, the other thing is if I find somebody I really like, I can sit down and read their blog for three hours. <laughs> if, I'm, if I'm following them on Twitter, I'm not going to scroll back through 3 million tweets, okay? And then all the subtweets and all the threads and everything that's going on there. Blogs give you searchable content um, that, you know, the, if I'm blogging about things that are relevant to my books, that archaeology stuff or, you know, whatever that is that, that I've blogged about that my readers were interested in, well, guess what's now showing up in Google search results when people look for that sort of thing. However, if I have a blog and I update it, and my last blog entry was in 2018, okay, people are going to arrive to my website, look at my blog entry from three or four years ago, and assume I got hit by a bus. <laughs> so, you know, it makes sure if you're not going to maintain one, then just don't have one, okay? That does not mean it has to be coming out weekly. It just means that it needs to look like it's still alive. Okay, uh, a few more things. Security. Remember I said that sometimes WordPress sites get hacked, but it's not really WordPress's fault because people don't update things. It's like, if you're still locking your house with the skeleton key, why are you surprised when you get burgled, okay? 
please update your stuff. It's super simple to update in WordPress. You click the update button and it happens automatically. Okay, just make sure that you do that. Most of the time when stuff gets hacked, it's because the WordPress core software or the plugins were not up to date. Okay, all right. Um, use a professional theme. And I talked about getting a theme. There are lots of places you can download free themes. Okay, I have a few concerns about free themes. Sometimes they include back doors so people can get into the sites that are using their free themes. Um, you know, if you're familiar with the phrase, if you're not paying for the product, you are the product. Okay, just be cautious about free themes. Um, reputable plugins. Um, it, this is again, really easy on WordPress. Uh, you look at the plugin, it's got a star rating system. There's one plugin I can look at and it says, oh, this has three stars and two people have installed it, or this one has 4.8 stars and 80,000 people are using it right now. One of these looks a little more reputable than the other, okay? And all of that is instantly visible when you look at a plugin on WordPress. Then, even though I just talked about how easy it is to move WordPress, you still want to back it up. Stuff still happens. Back up your website, just like you back up your manuscripts. Updraft Plus is a free backup plugin. It's in your link of resources. It's a really um, very easily available one to use. Um, and so I have mine set to auto magically without even me having to remember it, backs up my website every two weeks, stores it in a cloud for me. And, uh, and that's it, I never have to think about it again. Two-factor authentication, oh my gosh, guys, not just for your website, but for everything in your life. <laughs> if you are not using two-factor authentication, um, you are inviting identity theft. And I don't have time to go further into that, but please for that. Passwords, same thing. Every single account you have should have a different password. If that sounds scary to you, look into a password manager. I uh, love, uh, LastPass is the one I use, but there are lots, okay. Um, Weak passwords are a huge security risk. Um, I lost uh, several websites, had to, had to rebuild. Fortunately, I had backups um, because one of the people using a site that I was using used a weak password, allowed somebody to get in and they chained in through things. So just be aware of this. Um, and this is, the, this is all stuff that's in that resource list that I have for you. Um, so if this is not making sense to you right now, just Click, get to that, read the links that I have there. It will make more sense when I'm not explaining it in 20 seconds. Okay. Um, so yeah, I strongly recommend LastPass. Where is this? There we go. Um, LastPass is the one I use. Um, I've got an affiliate link for you. If you don't want to use the affiliate link, I don't care. That's fine. Just make sure you're using something because it's so preventable, you know, to, to, to stop these problems. Just be really cautious about what you do. So, okay. Um, my favorite plugins for writers. These are things that I use on my website and recommend. Author Media uh, makes my, oh, I think they technically sold it now to a different media company, but they originally developed uh, my book progress and my book table, which is the, uh, the progress bar that I showed you. And then also a place that you can put books so people can see them easily displayed. Um, Short Pixel takes your huge unwieldy photos that you took from your phone and uploaded directly to WordPress and shrinks them into photos that still look great but are a fraction of the size. And so they load much more quickly. Excuse me, that's good for your SEO. Two-factor authentication plugin, uh, it's just for security. Updraft Plus, that's for backup, I mentioned that. Super cache and optimize, help your site to load a little bit more quickly. You do not have to be tech savvy for that. Both of those have a do it automatically for me button. Then you can customize if you want to. Yoast or Squirrely, help with your SEO. Not a thing you need right away, but if you're starting to try to get a little more um, discoverability, that's something you can do. And all of these are things that I have uh, put up here. All of them have a free version available. They may have a premium version for some extra features, but all of these are things you can start with for free. That's what I was, oh, I take that back. Short Pixel may not have a free one anymore. I could be wrong on that. But anyway, those are things just to, uh, to, to look for. Okay. Angela says last pass is awesome. Yes. Yes, it is. I love it. <laughs> okay. Monthly, my maintenance is going to be, are my plugins updated? Is my site backed up? Okay. Did I update my calendar? Did I update my blog? Just make sure, you know, just checking in on your site. I have, you know, um, some, some of the stuff, uh, I'm pretty active on my author site, uh, but other sites that I maintain, I just have on my to-do list that pops up and, you know, every month have, make sure this is updated just so I know that it's still getting, uh, care. 
Okay, that made people know that everything is working. So there's that link again for the site resources. There's my website. So you can contact me directly if you so choose through my contact form on my site. Uh, and then I have a weekly stream that's to write and have written about the business of creativity. And that's what that is. Thank you so much. We are out. <laughs> I was just a little bit late. I'm so sorry. But uh, thanks for sticking with me. Go to your next session and have a fantastic evening. If you do have a very specific question, go ahead and contact me. Good night, guys. Oh, thanks for the sweet comments.